Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be looking at the structure of the atom in isotope notation. So this picture, which you can draw a very simple diagram of in your notes, shows that you know you have protons and neutrons in the center of the atom, and that's the nucleus, and then electrons are orbiting the outside. So this diagram is not 100% accurate. Um, in fact, the only parts that are, are that you have protons and neutrons in the center of the atom called the nucleus, and electrons are on the outside somewhere. Um, but it still gives you a good idea of the general location of the particles. And um, even though this isn't entirely a scale, it gives you the idea that, you know, again, they are different sizes. So what particles can be found in the atom? So simply, if we're looking at just like the three major categories, right, we've got protons, which can be abbreviated as the letter P, positively charged. So pro meaning positive. They weigh about 1.007 atomic mass units. That's what U stands for and they're found in the center of the nucleus, right here. Neutrons, we abbreviate that as N. They have no charge, that's what neutral means, and um, they weigh a little bit more than a proton, 1.009 atomic mass units. So even though it doesn't seem like a significant difference, they do weigh more. They're also found in the center of the atom, otherwise known as the nucleus. And then electrons, otherwise uh, abbreviated as E, or E with a little minus sign, um, they're negatively charged, so they have the opposite charge as protons. They weigh a tiny fraction of a proton, though, 0 0.00055 atomic mass units. That's really small. And they're found orbiting the nucleus in clouds, so it's not like this. It's not like they go in circles or in ellipses like planets. Um, they exist in a nebulous region that we like to call an electron cloud, still sometimes called you know orbitals. Um, and they can move pretty much anywhere within that orbital. So what do these particles do, right? What do they actually do for an atom? Protons designate which element is which. So if you change the number of protons, you change the element. So for example, hydrogen has one proton. If you add another one though to hydrogen, that makes it helium. It's no longer hydrogen anymore, even if you don't change the neutrons or the electrons or anything else. So again, for example, two protons is helium, whereas if you look at your periodic table, number 26 is iron, Fe. Neutrons. What do neutrons do? Neutrons give elements stability. If you have too many of them or too few of them, it can cause an atom to decay, which we'll talk about in another lesson in a little bit in this unit. And then a good example of that would be carbon is totally stable with six neutrons, but when you have eight neutrons in your carbon, it will start to decay through beta decay. Electrons. What do electrons do? Well, they balance out the charge of the protons. So, you know, in a neutral atom, the number of positives and negatives should be the same, right? Because it's a neutral atom. They also absorb and release energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, which we've already talked about. So they are um, what give off certain colors of light when um, the atom is excited. So atomic notation. This is what atomic notation looks like. So uh, let's kind of just diagram this in your notes first before we label it, but uh, each letter represents something. So for neutral isotopes, okay, that would mean for atoms, okay, just regular old atoms, the atomic number, Z, in that diagram that we just saw, okay, equals the number of protons, right, but also equals the number of electrons because in a neutral isotope, the number of protons and electrons have to be the same because it's neutral. Mass number. Number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The reason why it's called the mass number, by the way, is because electrons weigh almost nothing, right? So it doesn't matter really how many electrons you have, you're not going to change the mass very much. But the protons and neutrons are bigger. So most of the mass of an atom comes from the protons and the neutrons. And so we call that the mass number. And that was the letter A in, or in that atomic notation. And then the charge. The charge was Q, and it should always be zero for a neutral isotope because it's neutral. And so think about it, right? If I have 15 positive charges and 15 negative charges, the charge should be zero. Now, what about for ions? So ions are charged atoms. That's just kind of what we're going to call them for now until we actually define ions later on. But ions are literally just atoms with a charge to them. So the atomic number stays the same. That's the number of protons. But notice the number of electrons is not equal anymore. Next, mass number. Mass number, still the same, protons plus neutrons. 
What does change is the charge. So the charge is the number of protons minus the number of electrons. And that gives you whatever the charge would be. So that means that it's possible if you have more protons than electrons, you're going to have a positive charge because a big number minus a small number is still going to be a positive number. Whereas it's the opposite if you have more electrons than you do protons, right? If you have more electrons than you do protons, then you're taking, you know, a smaller number, subtracting a bigger number, you're going to get a negative value instead, which is where we get negative charges from. So here we go. Which element is this? So remember, this is our mass number. This is our atomic number. This is our charge. So see if you can figure out on your periodic table what it is. Answer number 55 is cesium. And so it, we actually didn't need these two pieces of information. Even if just it said number 55, we could find that and find cesium on the periodic table. Which element do you think this is? Technically, it's an ion, but still. Number 27, cobalt, right? How many protons, neutrons, and electrons does this one have? All right, so let's go with the easy ones first. How many protons does copper have? Remember, if it's, again, regardless if it's neutral or not, the number of protons is always given by the atomic number. So that would mean we have 29 protons. What about neutrons? So think about this, right? If we have 63, and that's the mass number, protons plus neutrons, I know this is just protons. If I subtract these two numbers from each other, that should give me the number of neutrons. So 63 minus 29 is 34. And then last but certainly not least, if this is my charge. And remember, charge equals protons minus electrons. So if I have a 1 plus here, right, I have to get 1. 1 is going to be equal to 29 minus what number? And that would be 28. And so again, if given any ion or any sort of um, random neutral isotope, can you figure that out? Here's another one. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons does this have? See if you can figure it out on your own, and then we'll see if you got it right. All right, so we've got protons. Subtract these two numbers to get neutrons. And then right here, it's neutral, right? So that means the charge, if the charge is zero, then the number of protons and electrons has to be the same. Because 6 minus 6 equals zero. Write the atomic notation for an atom, keyword, not an ion, of neon 21. All right, so remember, in isotope notation, the mass number can sometimes be written as a little dash, and then they put the mass number at the end. The reason why they do that is because, again, because you can vary the amount of uh, neutrons that you have in something, that can change the mass number. And so it's easy sometimes just to put uh, you know 21 instead. Um, so that you know that you're talking about a specific isotope of neon with a certain number of neutrons in it. So any is neon, we know that. 21 is going to be my mass number because it was given to me. What number is neon on the periodic table? Number 10. And it does say it's an atom, so that means the charge would be zero. And then here's another little fact. A lot of times if this is zero, you don't even include it. It's understood to be zero unless you have a charge written in the corner here. So write uh, the atomic notation for an ion of iron 57 with a 2 plus charge to it. All right, let's go. So Fe is iron, we know that. 57, mass number. What number on the periodic table, atomic number, sorry, is iron? It's number 26. And then I need to get a 2 plus, right? So remember, charge, so that's the 2 plus, equals protons minus electrons. So how many you know, um, oh, duh, I have a 24, but that doesn't matter, I guess. Uh, I just need to put the 2 plus here because it says it's a 2 plus charge. I was, like, really overthinking that. But if you wanted to know how many electrons it had, it would have 24 electrons, right? Because we have 26 positive charges. So if we have 24 negative charges, that means that I have a plus 2 charge over.